Thank you everybody for joining me again this week. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, we uh, have actually made some improvements. Uh, I've got the green screen in back so I can actually work at my desk now, which is uh, going to be kind of convenient for this episode and for some of the ones that are coming up shortly. Um, this episode is going to be mostly about, uh, I mean, at least it starts off with the, the whole concept of uh, Robin Williams having uh, uh, died uh, either through committing suicide or um, related to some other incident, but basically by choking himself or, or hanging himself. Um, it brought up a whole bunch of issues in my mind that I've uh, I've been thinking about, and you know I've been fortunate enough to to not have gone through any of the uh, the issues that, that may have led to uh, someone taking their life like that. Um, the the big thing is you know the the history that that Robin Williams had gone through with you know numerous divorces and some other things that happened with with women that ended up uh, uh, emptying out his pockets pretty good um, and, and that's if he committed suicide intentionally now um, I I don't know how familiar most people are with the statistics uh, that go with um, Going through a man going through a divorce, or um, you know the alimony process, the child support process, all of those things, they're not talked about too often. And um, I will you, you know put the links in the description below, along with some videos that uh, that I've seen uh, on the subject. Um, one speech that uh, was particularly painful, but I mean a good speech. But it was, you know the statistics that she delivered were particularly painful. Were at a libertarian convention that I went to a couple years ago. Uh, the the speaker was uh, she was really good. I'll put that in the, the description also if I can find it again. And uh, it was about an hour long speech, but it was uh, it was well worth uh, watching and it's very eye opening. Um, one thing that I I like um, typically is. You know, common law, or you know, the natural law, as opposed to the statutes that are dreamed up by uh, you know those fine men and women uh, in the state legislatures and, and and in Congress. Being sarcastic, of course. Um, but alimony actually does kind of go back uh, a long ways, uh, all the way back to the Hammurabi Code, and. Most recently, you know, for America, it comes through from, from English common law. That's where we basically uh, adopted it from. Uh, there are some problems with common law, and, and mostly because at the time that uh, the common law was, was you know, codified and, and you know, sort of cemented, there were, uh, there were advances that we just didn't have at the time. And there were some things that were done in society that we don't do anymore. Um, alimony, one of the biggest reasons why they had it in, uh, in England back then was that a woman, when she got married to her husband, had to give up her property. All her property became his. And when they got divorced, if they did, he, he didn't give her the property back. The property stayed his. So he was then required to pay alimony to her. So. Now, naturally, this was uh, more in the case of, uh, of wealthier people, but you know, it could it could apply to people that uh, had enough means to, to make an alimony uh, decision worthwhile. So, clearly, we've gone way past that. I mean, women don't give up their possessions anymore when they get married, and in most states, what you own before you get married actually is considered to always have you know to be yours and in the case of a divorce it doesn't get split up so you know while the legislatures are dragging their heels you know there are a lot of places where clearly things have been improved but we should really go all the way and fix the problems now as horrible as alimony sounds and can be it's not as bad in all 50 states. There are quite a few states where it's actually fairly 
uh, decent and it's kind of kept to a short period of time so that a woman who may be like a homemaker or who has a significantly different income level than her husband uh, can you know sort of make arrangements to get her life uh, geared towards her, her new situation and um, naturally the state that I came from was born in uh, New York is probably one of the worst uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm happy that I'm no longer in that state. Uh, it would be nice if they, you know, would get their collective butts together and, uh, and fix the problems. As you'll see later, they're only killing people. So. Uh, the state that I'm in now, which is one of the better states, uh, revised this laws back in 2011, and that's Florida. And and quite a few have also. But they, they you know, like I said, they, they keep it to a much shorter period of time. And, and they call it spousal support. And, you know, it's normally, you know, ba done on a needs basis. And, of course, this doesn't apply you know, to the Robin Williams situation, because and uh, like Mel Gibson also, and uh, I guess John Cleese uh, had some some issues with uh, with his divorce and alimony payments later. In those cases, the the amount of money that the women get it makes no sense. Uh, Mel Gibson, uh, I don't know how much he was worth at the time of his uh, divorce, but the alimony that he had to pay to his wife was like four hundred and twenty five million dollars this is a woman who was married to him for a period of time um, had children with him but four hundred and twenty five million dollars I mean where does that make even the remotest amount of, of sense I mean it's not like this is the alimony by the way I mean this isn't separation of uh, assets and stuff this is alimony so, I mean, that's crazy. I, I don't remember what the, the settlements were for uh, Robin Williams, because I, I don't really want to talk strictly about him in this, but that, that's just crazy. You know, millions of dollars uh, were, was the case with, uh, with Robin Williams. Uh, a girl he got involved with, a cocktail waitress, uh, they had a fling. Now, I don't know about you and me, but, you know, if I had a fling with some girl, the judge wouldn't make me pay six million dollars to her if she ended up with, you know, potentially a venereal disease for me. That just doesn't happen to, to us, uh, normal folk. So how six million? And, and by the way, she recognized who he was, you know, when when she met him. So, you know, six million dollars uh, for her to get the thrill of her lifetime by uh, you know being with a celebrity you know certainly he it wasn't like a, a Mike Tyson incident where he forced her to do anything that she didn't want to do so six million dollars it's just crazy so that kind of I really kind of want that to wrap up the, the, the whole idea of the, the alimony for the moment. Um, but then, then we go on to child support. And child support also comes, you know, to America from, from England and goes back to common law. And while it made sense at the time that a child born to a marriage would have to be taken care of by both the mother, def definitely the mother, I mean, because we, you know, if it's the mother, it's the mother. But also the father, or at least the the husband of the marriage, you know, of the marriage. Back at the time, they didn't have blood tests. They didn't have DNA tests to be able to make sure who the father is. Now the women may have known or suspected it might not be the man's father or the man's child, but you know, t typically they're pretty tight-lipped about that. Now, I don't know how long this goes back, but I mean, we we know now 
uh, through DNA testing. We can find out if a child is ours or not. And yet, to this day, some courts around the country, you know, even with presented with, with valid DNA data that says the child does not belong to that man, the court will still impose a child support fee on the man for a child that's not his. So basically, he is being abused by not only the woman who committed fraud against him, but also the, the state who, knowing the full well of the fraud, then continues to, to latch on to the man and impose a very severe penalty on him. You know, being an anarcho-capitalist, I have a hard time, you know, respecting the, the government, the state. But when they do something this heinous, it's it gets pretty extreme. I can't tell you how much it affects me. Um, but I'm I've been very fortunate, and that even though I was divorced once, I, I managed to avoid all of this. So I thank my lucky stars for that. So the the child support situation that needs to you know the. The alimony and the child support situation need to be radically, you know, changed in this country. And no place in, you know, the world, you know, in a place that made sense, you know, in, say, an ANCAP society, would there ever be a situation where a man would have to pay forever for having been married to a woman for a short period of time, or any period of time? You know, even if she's a homemaker, then she was basically fulfilling a job. And when the job is over, then why would you keep paying for it? And just like, you know, once the divorce goes through, the man can no longer expect to receive any benefits from the relationship with the woman. So why can the woman expect to continue getting benefits from the relationship that she had with the man? Uh, child support, you know, I, I think all of this should actually be handled through some kind of uh, standard prenuptial between a husband and a wife. It should be part of the marriage. You know, this is, uh, you know, what things are, are you know, we, we agree to in advance. You know, should things go wrong, this is what we'll do. If things go right, this is what we'll do. It wouldn't be a very particular, it doesn't have to be like a super spelled out uh, contract. And just basic tenets would be very easy to, to standardize and make reasonable to both parties. And it would be much better than the alternative you're going to see. Although, don't let me make you think that I, I think that divorce and, and all that are a good idea because they're actually a horrible idea. Um, short of marital infidelity and one spouse having absolutely no regard for for you know the marriage the marriage you know they should do everything they can to make it work so you know if you don't want to get divorced don't get married and uh, unfortunately the penalties for marriage are so high these days that uh, a lot of men are actually making that uh, making that choice. Uh, the percentage of the population that never gets married is 24 percent now. And the population that's married is 59 percent down from 62 percent in 1990 and 72 percent from 1970. So down, what is that, like 13 percent over the last, uh, and I'm not sure the year on these stats, uh, it was posted recently, so uh, I'm going to say like over a period of 45 years, the percentage has dropped quite a bit. Now, as far as the statistics go for uh, divorce, 80% uh, of divorces are unilateral. 
So coming from just one one of the two people wanting to get divorced. Uh, divorce increased almost 40% from 1970 to 1975. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just scanning through the, uh, the statistics here real quick. I don't want to burden you with all of them because they're pretty crazy, but... Oh. Uh, and, you know, everybody's walk, talking about, or at least you hear a lot of parents talking about, well, I had to do what was right for me and stuff like that, but often, you know, the children are not thought of very much in this. And some of the statistics for the children are pretty bad. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, men are typically five times, five, six times more likely to commit suicide in that first year uh, after a divorce than the woman is, as he's being raked over the coals by uh, the justice, well, the family court system. Let's, let's leave justice out of it, because clearly the state has. Uh, <clears throat> the drop in standard of living for females after divorce, as of 2000, is about 45%. In 1996, children of divorce were 50% more likely than their counterparts from intact families to divorce themselves. Fatherless homes account for 63% of youth suicides. 90% of homeless, or, or oh, 90% of the homeless runaway children. 85% of the children with behavior problems, 71% of high school dropouts, 85% of youths in prison, well over 50% of teen mothers, and you know naturally it takes a toll on you, and it, you know it's associated with a decrease in work productivity. Although that's really not the uh, the most painful statistic in there. And, you know, some states, like New York, allow the career homemaker to collect alimony for the rest of her natural life. That's after the kids have grown up and they've started their own broken families. The man still has to pay while the ex is couched. Oh, and... and uh, so I've kind of gone through the statistics I wanted to cover, but um, it's just it's kind of sad how far we've come from a situation where when you get married you think that everything's going to be great, and then uh, this is this is the kind of thing that happens. Now, granted, you know, men like Robin Williams or all these other celebrities and people who are affluent have a lot more to worry about and should probably be a lot more suspicious about the motives of the women who are looking to marry them. Because typically you don't hear of those ending very well and you don't hear of them uh, being very good uh, financial moves for these celebrities and affluent people. Unless, of course, they were smart enough to get a prenup. Uh, typically, alimony is paid to women, but in states where the woman, in a few states, and if the woman is more affluent than the man, the man can actually end up getting alimony, which is pretty nasty. So, you know, this, uh, <laughs> this stuff kind of really bothers me. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that my, uh, my ex-wife, um, let's leave out of the, the whole discussion, you know, what happened because, you know, she deserves her, her right to privacy, but, you know, neither of us asked for alimony in our divorce. So... I was fortunate not to have a, a very painful divorce, but I, I, you hear horror stories about uh, so many people 
So do the do, do the logical thing for yourself before you get married. Go through marital counseling. Make sure don't rush into it. Make sure who you're marrying is the right person. And you know, by all means, even if you're dirt poor when you get married, you know the the, the little bit of time and effort and money that it takes to sign a prenuptial and to set clear expectations for your marriage are well worth it. It doesn't sound romantic, but you know the the contract between the husband and wife that they would create is a heck of a lot more logical than the craziness that comes when you deal with the government and the the courts that they've set up. I mean, what they do has very little rhyme or reason, and family court judges are known for being especially capricious they will just do whatever they want to. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even read about uh, some recent uh, stuff where there are a few cases where people have been ordered to not, that, that they're not allowed to have children anymore. And that if they do, they'll be thrown in jail for contempt of court. So, you really don't want to end up in a situation where you have to go before a crazy judge. Uh, these people, I don't know if I've, I've mentioned it before, I hate to get unnecessarily repetitive, but and these people are just crazy sociopaths. They're just uh, power fiends. They have no desire to uh, even consider the pain and suffering that they cause other people. So... You know, it's a it's a sad and sorry subject to have to talk about. But you know, with with some of the things that have gone on lately, it, it, it just it's the issue that came up. It's not something I'm an expert on, unfortunately. But I did want to you know at least uh, talk to you about it. Got a show coming up next week. I hope that uh, now that I've got some of these things here, so I can so do some studio time. I'm going to be doing a show next week on the houseboats. And uh, I, I, I like to, I probably titled the, the show Anarchy on the Waves. So I hope you all have a good week, a good weekend. Uh, it's Friday night. And uh, please uh, check out some of the other videos on the channel here on the Voluntary Virtues Network. And uh, please subscribe. And if you like any of the videos, make sure you, you, know, you click like on them so that we can, we can get the feedback. And, and please leave some comments as well. You have a great night. Take care.